In this video, we're going to talk about league sizes and steps that leagues take in order to keep um, other uh, keep competition out of the market. So when you talk about a sports franchise in a league, um, you will see the you know they're in a location, but sometimes they will leave and go to a different location. So the opportunity cost of staying in a given city is the profits that the team is missing out on by not moving to a different city. And the main reason why teams move is because they're losing money in their current city or they because of better facilities or um, better incentives. Um, for example, um, teams will often move because the current city they're in will not pay for a new sports stadium but the new uh, city is willing to pay for that to get them to come there. Okay. Um, so you have a couple examples. So you have the Rams moved from St. Louis to Los Angeles in 2016. Um, and if we look at that. And so here we have, so again, they moved in 2016. And so if you look at the operating income, the profits, you can see that in the years leading up to that, profits were relatively low. So 24.6 million, 6.7, 21.1, 16.2. Now it jumped up to 34 and then 67 in 2014 and 15. But a big reason why that was happening was because um, it was known that they were going to be moving. And so you had more fans who were coming and watching since they were going to be losing that team so they want to have their chance to do it so then in 2016 after they move you see the big jump up in profits to 82 the first year so the first year you know you had a lot more people wanted to buy their stuff go to their games and so forth um, but then it went down a little bit and then jumped back up in 2019 but even when it went down in 2018 to 30 million all right, you do see that it was more than the years leading up to that. So, you know, the St. Louis is a smaller market than Los Angeles. And so the goal was to go there and try to capture a bigger audience, make more revenue, and so more profits. Now, the Chargers, who were in San Diego, also moved to Los Angeles in 2017, the next year. But they did not see the same increased profits. Um, likely reason why is because the Rams got there first people who wanted to support a team likely gravitated towards the first team which was there which was the Rams and so the Rams are able to capture a larger portion of the new fan base and so especially the first year the Chargers had a difficult time selling out a lot of their games um, but that has improved uh, more recently the Raiders moved from Oakland to Las Vegas in 2020 and this was largely over a dispute um, with Oakland over public funding for a new stadium. So when you talk about entry as a cooperative behavior, um, the number of teams in a closed league is fixed. Now, admitting new members does bring benefits. So letting a new team enter the league, it does bring benefits from uh, ticket fees that can be shared um, across all teams, um, but the, sh the shared revenue is now spread out across more teams. And so what you have is you have the marginal benefit of, um, or marginal revenue of each, you know, new team, which brings in more tickets and then the, an increasing marginal cost, because again, that needs to be spread out across more teams. So the marginal revenue is downward sloping because each new team brings in less and less additional revenue, okay? Um, because if they move to an area, the people who live in that area may already be fans of a different team. And so they just may not, um, you know, gravitate towards them um, or the new team that comes in. So for example, when the Jacksonville Jaguars enter the league, um, you know, the people who live in Jacksonville may already have been fans of the Miami Dolphins. And so they were not able to capture all the 
to be football fans there because some were already for another team. Um, so that's why the marginal revenue is downward sloping. The marginal cost tends to be upward sloping because of adding a, the cost of adding a new team rises as more teams are added. And a big part of that is because of the revenue getting shared across more teams. Now, leagues dictate where entry can occur. And smaller metropolitan areas tend to only have one team, um, but the larger metropolitan areas tend to have multiple. And so this shows the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And so these are the 10 largest metropolitan areas in um, the United States as a 2010 population. And you can see that not only do most of them have a major or a team in each of the major sports, um, the main exception being Houston not having an NHL team and Orlando not having an NHL team. Um, but a lot of them have soccer teams, WNBA teams. Um, but not only that, a lot of them have multiple teams in the same league. So, for example, New York and Los Angeles are large enough that they can support two baseball, basketball, and football teams. And New York can um, even support three hockey teams and two soccer teams. Um, now, when you get to the more of the medium-sized markets... They only have one, and because they really they're not large enough to be able to have fan bases to support both. So, as more teams are added in an area, the number of substitutes increases, which decreases the demand for each. So, for example, let's say you just had the Chicago Cubs. So in Baseball, you have the Chicago Cubs and the Chicago White Sox. Let's say the Chicago White Sox were never there. Okay. Well, now they come in. Well, sure, you can. they're going to have fans, but some of those fans are going to come at the expense of Chicago Cubs fans. And so it can decrease for both. Um, now, placing teams in desirable areas is also important for leagues to because it allows competition to stay out. Um, the American Basketball Association, the ABA, and the World Hockey League, the WHL, were previous leagues that were professional sports leagues, but they weren't the National Basketball Association the World, and the National Hockey League. Okay? So why did the ABA fail but the NBA succeed? big reason why is because the NBA was in more of the big market um, cities which kept the ABA out they were more of the smaller market ones and as a league they weren't able to build up as much of a fan base because of that okay. um, so closed leagues okay leagues where the number of teams and where they are is fixed uh, they carefully coordinate the games played and the prices charged for the betterment of the league even if it means some teams suffer. Okay. And when you talk about, for example, football, basketball especially, um, and even baseball to a smaller extent, um, you have the national, you know, games national, and the games that will be put on national TV, meaning that people around the country can view, um, will often depend on the popularity of the game. And so when you talk about baseball, uh, ESPN will have games every week, national games. And a lot of times when the Boston Red Sox and New York Yankees are playing each other, those games will be on the national um, broadcast. And the reason why is it's just they have more of a um, demand for them. And so by people watching them, it helps the league as a whole grow. So basically, just overall, a lot of this just comes down to the league making strategic decisions to help the leagues be A, sustainable, and B, grow.